As most of you already know, Yoza Ramel has been terminated by Comfort Corp, and they released an announcement on Tuesday, January 16th, JP Time, that confirmed the termination of Mel due to a breach of contract, engaging in acts of leaking information that she acquired from the company to third parties. Now, no one knows exactly what information Mel leaked or who she leaked the information to. However, we do know that Mel has confirmed on her Twitter that she has indeed breached her contract and thus is accepting responsibility for her actions. And as usual with past Terminating Hall Live members, Mel's social media and YouTube channel will be deleted sometime in February of this year. Now my thoughts on this whole situation regarding Mel's termination. I think in this situation, it's pretty easy to go for the low-hanging fruit and just blame Mel for this whole incident and accept this termination as repercussions for Mel's actions. And honestly, I would have nothing against this line of thinking if this had happened to anyone else except Mel. Any of the other 86 active affiliated Hall Live members I'd have zero complaints, but for Mel, there's no chance of this happening because she is the only one in Hall Live who deserves a break for her breach in contract. If you didn't know this is about Yosra Mel, Mel debuted on May 13th, 2018 as a member of Hall Live's first generation. Her first year was pretty successful in terms of VTubers at the time, reaching milestones of 50,000 subscribers after her first year. The next year, in 2019, Mel would find steady success, but following the month of October 2019, she would go into a semi-hiatus, only streaming a handful of times until the following year of 2020. On May 16th, 2020, she posted a statement on her Twitter that addressed her semi-hiatus. Mel informed viewers that she had been a victim of harassment, which caused her to go into a semi-hiatus in 2019. Mel felt unsafe because a perpetrator was someone she knew in real life. She had to go to the authorities and take the harasser to court to stop their harassment, which eventually ended in March of 2020. She then thanked her fans and stated that she hoped to be able to continue her activities at some point. She also stated that she decided to make this issue public because she hoped that by releasing this statement, it could help prevent future harassment incidents from occurring to members in whole life and people in general. On May 24th, 2020, CoverCorp also released a statement about the issue. They apologized for their mistakes in the handling of the situation. The termination of the harasser from Hall Life staff was also stated, and they also announced changes that would be happening within the company to prevent this from ever happening again, and noted that they would be paying any fees to Mel in regards to handling the legal issue. But the damage was done. Mel had missed the VTuber wave that started early in 2020, the VTuber boom, where numbers were reaching upwards of 30,000 per stream for average VTubers where collabs with Teen Hall Live members reached hundreds of thousands of views, where new viewers would tune in to be introduced to their first ever VTubers. She missed out on all that, and yet through her own sheer will and tenacity, Mel recovered and kept streaming, making strides to reach her now 888,000 subscribers. With all this in mind, Hall Live decided that firing Mel was justified. We know now that the harassment Mel received was due to Hall Life's poor vetting and managers, leading to Mel's former manager harassing her in real life and stalking her for months on end. And if you didn't know, Japan has a terrible track history of actually pressing charges against harassers or stalkers. And many authorities don't even take harassment seriously. No cases like Shiori Ino, Mayu Tomita, Yuka Takooka, and those are just a few of the most publicized cases. Mel's harassment reached a point where she had to go to legal authorities. And Hall Eye's response was basically, we'll cover the legal fees, fire the manager, make a public announcement, and not make any more mention of this incident ever again, sweeping this whole incident under the rug like it never happened. We'll implement a 6-12 to 12 month manager change with every Hall Life member to prevent harassment from happening again in the company. The double standard to me is so insane. I feel like Mugatu in Zoolander right now. They're the same face! Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! So Hall Live can release personal information to their employee and have harassment and stalking occur, seeing to privacy being invaded and literal laws being breached. But when Mel slips up releasing Hall Live information to third party, she's immediately handed down a termination slip and essentially swept under the rug. Yet again! I'm sorry for the rant, but I felt like this had to be said. As much as I like Yago, Moto Akitanigo is the president and CEO at Cover Corporation. He needs to do better. I know it's easy to praise his work and his successes, but I think as Hall Live viewers and fans, moving forward, we also have a responsibility to call it hypocrisy and bullshit. The decision to fire Yosuro Mel is one that has no moral standing at all. And this isn't the first time Hall Live members have been under fire for leaking quote unquote sensitive information out of Hall Live. So instead of just placing blame, I'll list a few suggestions to fix the leak issue. 
One, hire consultants or professionals, not managers, to check up on Hall Life members one by one, making sure each and every one of your 86 active and affiliated Hall Life members are in a stable state, whether it's physically, mentally, or even financially. Not all Hall Life members are making enough to live comfortably. I'll go over this in a separate video with numbers, gross income, revenue, etc. on a later date, I promise. Two, instead of pushing the metaverse and whatever Hall Life Earth is, start putting resources into taking care of lower viewed and sub Hall Life members. I know Hall Life is still business at the end of the day but Hall Life's paying managers to manage but managing isn't all they need. How about English classes for Japanese members who want to attend or Japanese classes for English members? The idol singing and dancing classes are great but how about making events for Hall Life members that don't really have a chance to get the spotlight? Pay for cameos and things like anime, manga, or even an ad that isn't a sponsorship. If they fail to attract more viewers, fine, but at least give everyone a chance to succeed by pushing everyone into the spotlight at least once. And I'm not talking about featuring them in a hall of graffiti or putting them into a concert. Three, instead of firing someone on the spot for a breach of contract, implement a strike policy. For egregious things or illegal things, termination on the spot is fine, but for things that aren't egregious, provide a strike policy so that Hall Life members aren't just greeted with a termination the minute they slip up. Force hiatus for a month, week, whatever. And being more transparent with the community that supports you would also be nice. Instead of using bad diction like third parties or breach of contract, disclose more information to the Hall Life community so that we understand why someone's being terminated. You don't need to list names, but things like how many times a contract is breached or vague extent of the breach won't hurt. There's such a low possibility that this information would leak Hall Life sensitive data. Heck, speculation causes more chaos than just being honest, and people have invested time, money, and other resources to just support these Hall Life members, so I'd say it's not a big ask to disclose a bit more as to why someone's favorite Hall Life member is fired. I don't know. Maybe I'm the crazy one, and I know this video isn't gonna be a popular opinion, but I feel like this was something I had to say. On a different note, please, please, please support Mel's news channel, Rika Channel. Link will be in the comments down below, and she's already reached 400,000 subscribers at the time of this video. But getting her to her original goal and subtotal is what everyone I think wants to see. So go check out Mel's new channel, Rika Channel. I'll end this video with this last note. As much as I have criticized Hall Live in this video, know that this comes from a place that wants to see Hall Live and Hall Live members succeed. A future where Hall Live members aren't forced into retirement, but rather go out on their own terms. That's all. That's the future I want to see moving forward. So with that said, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.